contraindications and special considerations. Okay, I'm going to we'll go on from there, so I'm going to assume you guys kind of cover right. that. Explain, Con breathing yeah. through the nose would be a big contraindication, I'll mm -hmm. just say that. Uh, examine briefly the procedures to be performed in this necessity for the, just explain to them why you're doing this, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, the student protected themselves <coughs> with the recommended OSHA type mask that she's going to be wearing. Yeah, this is the NIOSH mask, and since you're dealing with particulate matter here, it's important to have your NIOSH mask. You'll need your NIOSH mask in the materials lab too for gypsum for the same reason. So have your NIOSH mask on. I know how much you guys all love these. <laughs> but hopefully, you've got, and I'm sure I'm going to look wonderful with it on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. But this is the mask you want, okay? So uh, make sure it's tight around your nose. Okay, next. At, um, obtained a bite registration on the patient first. Okay, so are we, dem are we demoing the whole bite registration thing? I guess we can. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so what do you remember about bite registration? <laughs> it's foil. One glove on your non-dominant hand. Remember that? Mm -hmm. One glove on your non-dominant hand. And the reason is we don't want to contaminate the, the gun. Mm -hmm. Now, where do we go with the bite registration paste here mm -hmm. material? You're supposed to be a canine, but you go a little bit past when you get the canine. Well, you need a posterior tooth and anterior. I think you're, we need the first premolars. We need the first posterior tooth that the patient has. So usually that for most of you guys, that's going to be a first premolar, right? So then we actually put the tip <coughs> onto the second premolar so we get a really good impression. <coughs> okay. So, um, actually, I gloved just a little quickly here. The reason for the glove on the non dominant hand is so we don't contaminate our gun. Remember, this part's going to go in the patient's mouth, so hold it by the little tip there. And there is a little V shaped notch at the top of this that matches the V shaped notch on here. It just pushes on, and then you twist it. If you fail to twist it, what's going to happen when you express the material through? Oh. Yeah, which does not inspire confidence from your patients. So, mm -hmm. so try not to do that. Also, um, once you start to expel material into this, it's mixing. That means you're into your working time. So don't express the material down there, then lay this down and pick it back up. You're, you've lost your opportunity there, okay? All right. <coughs> Okay, so you're going to retract. Go ahead and lean back on the head. She has a full complement of teeth, so I'm going to put the tip of this onto the second premolar just to start there so that I get a good impression of the first premolar and we'll work our way around. If you've got a brand new cartridge, you may need to expel just a little bit because it tends to be kind of oily. And my hand's going to shake. Everybody's hand shakes when we do this. It's just the way it works. So just get a nice thick bead, and don't forget that you have to let go to reload the gun there. Okay, you're going to bite your teeth together. Hold and bite the okay. There we are. Smoke smile. Go spray. There it goes. Now, this is not alginate, so we don't need to wrap this in a moist paper towel, right? Right. Right. So you can just, once you've sprayed it good, you can set it aside on a paper towel and just let it air dry. And then at that point, we're done with that one. Okay? Now, these are really small bowls. Okay, but it's what we've got, so we're going to do the best we can. They're pretty tiny. Remember, we had great big ones. We have kind of small ones here. Um, make sure that your water measure, I'm going to use three scoops. Make sure that your water measure is right on that line. You don't want it a little under. You don't want it a little over. It will affect your mix, okay? And you want the water as cool as, as, cool as you can get it. If it's not coming out of here cool enough to suit you, there's a water fountain outside. But just be sure that if you use water fountain water, that your patient's teeth are not particularly sensitive because that can make the material feel awfully cold. Don't eyeball this. Set it down on a flat surface and then look it over. 
That looks pretty good, okay? So put the water, I'm going to put the water into the, do we put powder into water or water into powder? Water, powder, powder into water, okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to put my, and this is going to be real interesting to, this is going to be real interesting to see how I can keep three scoops in that little bowl. Those are tiny bowls. It's a tiny bowl. <laughs> All right, so I've already fluffed my powder. Make sure when you, that you have both a straight and a beaver tail spatula. Use the straight spatula for um, measuring out your uh, material, because if you use the curved one, what's going to happen? Unlove all scoops. It's going to scoop out more material than you want. Okay, so use the straight one. Uh, do we have the... Oh, it's in here. Let's see, where's the measure? Be crap, are you rinsing or they're air drying? I rinse right now. Okay, so you want to make sure that your patient rinses or air, you air dry the teeth before we place the... And you'll already have this part done for right. measuring out, right? Yes. Okay, so why are we rinsing and air drying? Yeah. If you're rinsing, your mouth is wet, and if you air dry, it's dry. So they have an option to do either or? Mm -hmm. Correct. No. It doesn't. <laughs> okay, we'll rinse and air dry. Now, I'll make rinse sure or. that you don't do both. Or. Okay. Oh, both? Oh. Rinse. Okay, see, I thought it was either or. No, no, yeah, it's, you, you had rinse. patient rinse or air dry the teeth. you want to dry? Rinse or air dry. Don't do both. Okay. I know. Well, remember, you're rinsing not with water, but with... I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, because you guys know I'm usually on the receiving end. Yeah. You know, I was always the patient, so it's just like, okay, I'm the guy. Hey, All right, but here we go. Now, how long do you have to mix this stuff? 30 seconds? Not very long. Not very long. 30 to 45 seconds. Get it wet first. But then the, the real trick to this stuff is to mash it against the sides of your bowl. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally. And whether or not you will learn to turn the bowl like this. Don't be gentle. Yeah, don't be gentle. Or if you work it this way. Also, make sure you get to the bottom of that bowl. If you start loading that tray and you got all kinds of dry, crumbly stuff in there, you haven't, you got a problem. So this is looking pretty good. Now, be careful not to overload these trays, especially in the back, especially through the palate area. You just don't need it unless your patient has a really high vaulted palate. Take a little water. Push it up towards the front because that's really where you want it to go. You don't need a lot here. Notice that's pretty flat. Don't be mounding it up. Okay? Then to load your syringe. Okay, this is too crafty. You would raise your lift up. Just going to use the syringe and load the You only need the a little wheel. bit. And then it's going to go right there. Right across there like that. You're going to seek a maxillary tray. You're going to stand behind the patient at 11 or 1. You're going to seat the tray posteriorly to anterior. And See, one. I'm keeping it tilted down. Mm -hmm. So posterior first. And center up that handle, mostly with the patient's nose. Yep. Seated in posterior, you're going to move all the way up to the anterior. Good. Make sure the upper lip is on the outside of the anterior portion of the tray when seated. <laughs> yep, head forward, clear the buccal vestibule, and direct the patient to pull their upper lip down after seating. By pushing down gently. Ooh, that, I hate that feeling on my But it, these trays lock in here. So you're going to use your index finger to close just a little bit. You're going to go to the back, and you're going to push down. There it went, right there. Whoa. Only do one side at a time. Close just a little bit. Have your patient close. There we go. There we are. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got an impression. That's a good one too, guys. Look at it. Do this, so. so see it's how much we that syringe, how much you oh. get up here? Yeah. This is the reason why. Okay. The reason why. So you're going to take it to here and rinse it good. Come here. Thanks. You did a good job, Mrs. Brown. Thank you. <laughs>
Now, do you have a preferred way? Does it, I tell my students in clinic, we have them just use a paper towel as a barrier. Yep. Uh -huh. On the, uh, well, assuming you can get one out. You have to grab like 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get it moist. And, yep. and then spray it real good. All surfaces. Start item. Yeah, don't forget to do this. And is that what the paper towels were? No, those were. You can take you can take the paper towel you just used, wrap it gently, and then remember because you've cuffed your bag, you can hold your bag by the cuff, and you can just place it inside. You don't actually wet the paper towel. You just some spray that. some of them do keep it wet and moist if they're not going back there immediately. Right. You want a little moisture in there, not soaking wet, right? But a little bit of moisture so that when the bag's closed, you essentially have a hundred percent humidity environment in there. So. It usually doesn't take a lot of moisture to do that, especially in a Ziploc bag. If you're going to leave it set out on the counter and it's not in a bag, then you need a more moist paper towel. Okay.